We're going to hear from Nate Nichols from Narrative Science. He's going to talk to us about no more dashboards, why data storytelling is your key to communicating insights. As a chief scientist, Nate is responsible for defining narrative science's vision for AI and automated data storytelling, ensuring that their products are aligned to that vision and articulating that vision outside of the company. Over his over 10 years at Narrative Science, Nate and other inventors have been granted 45 patents with another 40 filed. Prior to Narrative Science, Nate earned his PhD at Northwestern University in AI with his thesis, Machine Generated Content. All right, I cannot wait to hear from you, Nate. I'm gonna go ahead and add you to, oops, added the wrong thing. I added your slide before I added you. Nate, welcome to the show. Hi, Kate, thank you. Thanks for having me, Hi, everybody. Absolutely, I won't take up any more of your time, Nate, so I'm gonna go ahead and share your slides. I'll hop off and I'll be back in about 10 minutes with questions. All right, sounds great, thank you. Hey, everybody, thanks for listening today. Dashboards have failed us. They've had 20 years to realize their vision of having everyone in the org understand and act on data, and they have failed completely. It's a tragedy in slow motion, and it's one we have to call out explicitly because the vision of BI is a beautiful one. It's a worthy one, and dashboards are never going to get us there. We need a new way, a better way, and that's why I'm here today, to show a better way for ordinary business users to understand and act on what's happening in the data. They say it's better to be at the bottom of a ladder you do want to climb than halfway up one you don't. And right now, the entire industry is halfway up the dashboard ladder. And when we look up, we see that the ladder goes nowhere. It's a dead end. And admitting that is the first step towards something better. So how do we know that dashboards aren't working? Well, we know because they haven't broken through the 30% ceiling. Now, if you care about BI adoption, this 30% ceiling will haunt you. Right, it shows up everywhere. With dashboards, only 35% of employees get insights in a way they can act on. 31% of employees feel like their org is data-driven. That's actually down from 34% the year before. About 30% is the best conversion rate you can hope for with any dashboard you build. 30% is, is the penetration we usually see with uh, BI and advanced analytics tools. 30%. 30%. We've had dashboards for 20 years, and we're talking numbers in the low 30s. Can you imagine if 20 years after Google search came out, you only found what you're looking for about 30% of the time? 20 years after Alexa came out, she only understood you correctly 30% of the time. 20 years after Google Maps, you only got to your destination about 30% of the time. Of course not, it's preposterous. This is the world we're in with dashboards. And we can, we can pick on dashboards all day, right? But we need to have some alternative. We need to have some consumption layer, some last mile of the BI pipeline. And this may sound like some kind of like big, difficult problem, but it's not. It, it turns out there's the right answer. Researchers have actually done the studies, and we know the best way to communicate data and insights to people in a way they understand and act on. They're called data stories. I'm sure you've heard that term today here at Datacated, but if you haven't, here's a couple of examples. I'm sure you've interacted with them online. And we have a pretty rigorous definition for, for what it takes to be a data story as well. Gartner and, the, and a guy named Brent Dykes, who I think is speaking here shortly, They've worked on this and they come up with three pillars that every data story has. The first is visualization, right? Charts and graphs like we're used to. But this isn't a random shotgun blast of charts like you might find in a dashboard. These are specific visualizations that have been selected to support the main point and the takeaways of the second pillar. That's the narrative. The narrative is real sentences that describe what's happening in the data in a way that the reader can understand and wrap their arms around. The narrative usually has a top line point. It's trying to make support for that point, cause and effect, surprising or unexpected things, data-driven context to give you a broader picture, possible suggested next steps. When an exec stares at a dashboard for a few seconds and says, mm, tell me what I'm looking at here, they're asking for the narrative. And finally, the third pillar is context that's not in the data. The team was at an offsite, so their numbers are down. The client was out sick, so the deal slipped to next month. There were some bugs, some engagement numbers last month look lower than they actually were. The kind of stuff that is not in the data itself, but is really critical for understanding what is in the data. And my guess is that something about data stories might jump out at you. First, it makes sense that they're really effective, but they also sound like a pain in the ass to make, right? They're really easy and nice for the readers, but it's a huge amount of work for the authors. 
So it's no wonder that data stories really haven't taken over the world, right? Your analysts are already stretched thin as it is, asking them to regularly pull together accurate, deep, insightful data stories. For every business user in your org is asking way too much. So we're, we've been kind of stuck. Data, in, data stories have the impact we're longing for, but they've been impossible to scale. Dashboards, they don't really work well for, for typical business users, but they scale really nicely, right? You can give out Power BI access all day long. And so this is the impasse we've been at for years. And so we've collect, collectively kept climbing that dashboard ladder to nowhere. But this is, this is exactly why I'm so excited to be here today. Because we're at Narrative Science, we've found a new way forward, a way to deliver data stories and their impact, but with the scalability of dashboards. It's called augmented data storytelling. It's AI that's powerful enough to understand what's happening in the data and what matters to you, write that out in plain language, choose appropriate visualizations to support, and make it easy for readers and users to annotate and provide context that's not present in the data. It works for any combination of metrics, filters, and parameterization of your data, and it writes data stories in seconds. It's like having an eager, informed personal analyst for every single business user in your org. Now, it's taken us 11 years and a crack team of PhDs, linguists, and analytics experts to build out the technology. We've got 45 patents on it now and 40 more pending. Our tech isn't perfect, but it works. We've cracked the nut, and it's getting better every day through both our engineering efforts and what it's learning from our user, users. So at the highest level, it works like this. Our system takes as input your business data as well as an understanding of your overarching question. Do you want to know about sales on the West Coast last week, how your recruitment funnel is looking this week, how your inbound leads break down by source, what your best customer service rep is doing differently than the rest of the team? Based off your initial question and what it knows about you, the system begins exploring the data on your behalf, chasing down leads, looking for drivers, understanding possible impacts for the future. Then it pulls all that information together into a well-structured story, writes it out in language, chooses suitable visualizations to support, and then makes it available for the user to read, share, and act on. Now, I'm, I'm super proud of our technology and what our engineers have built, and I'm happy to talk about it all day long. But it turns out that a miracle machine that can write data stories in seconds is only half of the equation we need to build out a true replacement for dashboards. The other part of the, uh, the equation is this, where did these stories actually live? What is the experience for doing the reading, sharing, and acting on? And the good news here is that we've got 20 years of prior art and how to build great, engaging, modern experiences that people return to again and again. We've got 20 years of good ideas for us to study, adapt, and build into our product. So we started by surveying the apps and experiences that we love and have proven successful with, con with consumers. Spotify, Netflix, Apple News, Reddit, Twitter, Stitch Fix, New York Times, on and on. And we made a list of the features we saw over and over. Push notifications, a newsfeed experience for staying current, a look and feel that's friendly and approachable, alerting to let you know about something important, personalization, a fantastic mobile experience, embedding with other apps, social features, attractive design, recommendations for you, a follow or subscribe model. And we boiled those all up into three main points. And we knew that the home for our augmented data stories had to be a simple, personal, and proactive experience. And this slide essentially became our design brief. And I'm very proud to say that our prod dev team met the hell out of that brief when they built Lexio. Lexio is the world's only augmented data storytelling product, and it's the only BI product with a simple, personal, and proactive experience. It's the last mile of BI. It's available for sale now, and I just got time today to give you a little sense of what it actually looks like. Here it is, and you can see it looks nothing like a dashboard. Right on the laptop on the left, you see our summary screen. This is the first thing a user sees when they log in, helps them quickly get oriented with their day. And on the right, on the mobile, you see our newsfeed and individual stories. Our newsfeed is curated for each user and what they care about and what matters to them. And the story interface allows users to dig deeper without losing that broader context. So now you've seen just a little bit of Lexio, and, and I'll bet you fall into one of two camps. The first camp is usually smaller. It's people who see Lexio and think, nah, I'm, I'm good with the status quo. And if that's the case for you, then no hard feelings. That's on me for not convincing you. I'll check back uh, dedicated next year to see if you're sick of your dashboards yet. But my guess is that you're in the second camp. You've seen Lexio and, and you kind of think you've seen the future. 
you're having the experience of the guy riding in a horse-drawn carriage when the first gasoline-powered car goes roaring by. The experience of being in an Apple store with a Blackberry or a flip phone and playing with your first iPhone. It doesn't mean you're ready to buy Lexio today, but you're curious. Maybe you've got a few dashboards that you know are important, but no one is looking at them. You're wondering if the Lexio model would work better. Maybe you know you're doing great work, but your customers aren't looking at the dashboards you built to demonstrate that. You're wondering if Lexio could help them understand the value you're already providing. Maybe you want to learn more about our data governance. You want to talk to other customers of ours who have deployed Lexio successfully. Absolutely, all of that is important. But more important is that little tickle in the back of your mind, that little certainty that we are right. Dashboards do suck. And they're not going to get better now when they haven't meaningfully changed in the last 20 years. Data stories really are the best way to communicate data in a way that impacts decision making, which is literally the entire value prop of BI. These stories really do need to be AI generated if we're going to have them at anything approaching the scale we need. And the stories really do need to be provided in an engaging experience that earns its place on your business users' home screens. You agree with Gartner when they say in two to four years, data storytelling will be the primary way that business users access data and analytics, and 75% of those stories will be generated automatically. If I'm talking to you right now, then please do something. Check out our site and try the online demo. Schedule a free trial with one of our reps. Hit me up on LinkedIn. Do something to stop throwing good money after bad, to stop climbing the dashboard ladder to nowhere, and to start climbing the ladder to Lexio's treehouse. We've got conference rooms full of people aligning on decisions instead of arguing over dashboards. We've got home offices where people's downtime is spent with their friends or family instead of writing little bullets under screenshots of charts. We've got one-on-one -on -one meeting with open and forum communication and conversation instead of gotchas and defensiveness. We've got analysts doing deep, meaningful analytical work instead of playing whack-a-mole or building things that no one uses. We love it here. Our customers love it here. If you think you might too, then let's talk. Thanks for your time. Awesome, Nate. Thank you so much for that really great presentation. I have, um, I have a first. My first question here is, what would happen if we only achieved thirty percent of our destinations using Google Maps? I just pictured it, and like, I want to go to the library and only get there thirty percent of the time. That. I think that metric is really powerful. We do have lots of questions and comments coming in from the audience. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in and start with Bob's question here. And he's asking, you know, why is audio often not considered in storytelling? Because it seems like we are focused here on text mainly. Um, it would seem that it could further augment or replace visualization, narrative, and context. So I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, I think that's a great push, Bob. And one of the one of the things we're really excited about with Lexio, and we've actually built this out as, as a, a sort of internal proof of concept to make sure it to make sure it basically works. But as as Lexio is getting a better, better sense of what matters to you, it's able to really sort of lean in and understand the stories that are going to resonate with you. And from there it can start to build out longer form packages. And so one of the things we're really excited about is Lexio actually producing like a morning podcast for you, right? On your mm -hmm. on your commute into work, you could have a 15 minute daily update about all the sort of business data and it's created exactly for you. It's about your teams and the metrics you care about and, and the, the goals you're on the hook for. So I, I think audio is definitely um, is definitely a big part of Lexio's future. Awesome, thank you for sharing that. Uh, it looks like David here says that his company already uses Lexio, so that's cool. I guess he was trying to get into get his company into using Lexio, and they found out they already use it. Uh, so that's great. We <laughs> great, have, glad to hear it. Yeah, we have a question here from Scott Taylor, and he said he he heard something that you did with local kids sports games. Can you tell us more? Yeah, so um, like like I like you uh, kind of introduction, Kate. I've been in narrative science for a long time, and a lot of what um, we did, particularly at the beginning, uh, sort of early days of the company, was more around uh, report replication. And one of the one of the kind of reports that that we did a lot of work around was actually baseball game recaps. And so, if you're familiar with the Game Changer app, which is a really common app for little leagues that lets parents um, and coaches and stuff score. I think I might have that for soccer, but it might be something else. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we do soccer ones, uh, but we do okay. definitely do different little league. But yeah, that was our technology. So it'd be parents okay. or coaches inputting what happened, and then our technology um, writes stories. Um, you know, these little league game recaps, and it's it's a model I really like because it's not it. There aren't a huge audience for any one of those particular stories, but we've heard from a lot of 
grandparents and aunts and uncles and you know parents who are traveling for work that that still get to sort of feel some of that experience i know it's really exciting for the kids as well so it's it's a great example of what you can do with targeting a very sort of small audience for each individual story and um, you can yeah. create really great content that way awesome and we'll just take one last question here from lena she's asking is this a replacement for crm products or something to use alongside them yeah, so th this Lexio is really um, being positioned as you would do CRM for what to sort of generate the data, and then Lexio would sit on top of that and really help you understand what's happening with your CRM data. So we're not we're not actually like managing you know customers and that kind of stuff within Lexio, but any of that kind of reporting anywhere there's a dashboard today, particularly that's um, targeting non technical users, people in marketing and sales and customer success and HR. All those kind of folks are, are exactly the right audience for, for Lexio. I'm speaking on mute. Look at that. The host on mute. How dare it? <laughs> no, I had some background noise, so I muted it. Um, last question for you. Uh, personally, I want, I want people to know where can they go to find out more about Lexio if they wanted to get a trial or kind of play around with the tool? Yeah, um, you can uh, just DM me on LinkedIn and I'll also, um, I can hang out and drop into the chat, but it's narrativescience.com. If you Google narrative science or Lexio, uh, we're there. There's a free online demo you can try without signing up for anything. Um, and you're also obviously get in contact um, with us and we're happy to you know trial things with your data so you can see what Lexio actually looks like within your organization. Okay, awesome. Well, Nate, thank you so much for your time here. Awesome, thank you, Kate. Thanks everybody for listening.